Hi, welcome to this short introductory video of this MPTL course titled Trauma and Literature. I'm a course instructor, Abhishek Pari. I teach English and Memory Studies at IIT Madras. So in this very short video, I'll talk a little bit about the course in terms of the content of the scope uh, and the uh, philosophical framework, uh, you know, which informs uh, this particular course. And of course, the text which we were looking at, the primary text which we're looking at and examining in some details as we move along. So this is a 12-week course, which is a 30-hour course, uh, one of these uh, frameworks in NPTL, uh, which will have an evaluation pattern, which is weekly, as well as uh, towards the end, the two big exams which come in the end, uh, and it will be an interactive forum as well, where we can interact with each other. You can post your questions, your comments, and I'll do the best I can in terms of responding to the same. Now, just a little bit of time talking about what is a course about. So trauma and literature. Uh, is a very interdisciplinary examination of the traumatic mind and the politics of trauma, the landscape of trauma, the spatio-temporal condition of trauma. So you're looking at the convergence of emotionality and materiality. So how, how is trauma materially informed? How is it discursively informed? Uh, I mean, looking at the relationship between the embedded neural condition of trauma uh, and the more extended and active political social quality of trauma, and how this convergence can take place through the medium of fiction and that is something which we'll be spending a lot of time on, looking at the unique ontology of fiction as a medium uh, through which the complex traumatic mind can be represented, can be curated uh, through a combination of reality and possibilities, right? So memory, forgetting, trauma, absence, narration, identity, embodiment. So all these categories will keep emerging as recursive conditions throughout this course. And what we'll see is these are medical conditions, biological conditions, embodied conditions, corporeal conditions, but equally discursive conditions, uh, political conditions, affective con conditions. So we're looking at a very interesting convergence, shall we say, uh, between the politics of effect and the effect of politics, right? So that's where the traumatic mind uh, is sort of is liminally located. Uh, and its liminal location of the traumatic mind is something which is uniquely captured uh, in the framework of literary fiction, because fiction as a medium uh, is a combination of possibilities, of reality and imaginative possibilities. Uh, it can also accommodate absence. Uh, it can also accommodate an articulate ambivalence. And I look at ambivalence as a, uh, as a category of possibilities, ambivalence, so the possibility of accommodating and articulating multidimensional meaning, ambi, multi-meanings. Right, so th these are the uh, some of the philosophical frameworks which we'll be looking at and examining in some details. So the course content in this course, as you can see, is a series of texts. Uh, of course, the partition forms a very important uh, component of this course. So we can see Toba Take Singh by Salah Hassan Monteau, uh, Cold Meat by, again, by Monteau, very famous short stories, uh, which look at the, uh, the corporeal condition of trauma, but also, as I mentioned, the inactive condition of trauma, trauma as a political category, uh, trauma as a production of identities, the production, deproduction, and reproduction of identity. So identities become a very mutable category uh, in trauma, a slippery category, a mutable category, a painful category, a tragic category. So the tragedy of trauma uh, also becomes uh, an, a production of different kinds of possibilities and identities which are sometimes uh, mutually contradictory. And the fictional framework, the medium of fiction that Dante uses, it offers a very interesting focal point to reach this, uh, you know, these categories can be represented and curated. Now, in contrast to that, we have Urvashi Butalia's book, The Other Side of Silence, which is a post-memory book, a non-fictional medium, but again, which relies on narrativity, identity, and embodiment. It's very important categories through which the entire experience of trauma can be curated. It's the work of curation, it's the work of collecting identities and memories. So memory forms a very important part in this course, memory and forgetting, and how we look at these two categories as sometimes interconnected rather than as being ontologically opposite of each other. So memory and forgetting inform each other rather than being ontological opposites. Moving on, we have some short stories. We have The Fly by Catherine Mansfield, and we have a novel, uh, Mrs. Dalloway by uh, Virginia Woolf. Both have the setting of the First World War uh, as a backdrop, as a political backdrop, a profoundly political backdrop. Now, against this backdrop, we have human subjects moving and trying to negotiate uh, with trauma. So we have sort of interesting emergence of masculine identities. So both these texts are very interesting study of masculinity and trauma in different ways, in different combinations. Uh, in the case of uh, Mrs. Dalloway, it's more directly medical. We have example of what we now call PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Of course, it wasn't uh, classified that at that point in time. It was more of a shell shock thing. And in the case of Fly, we have a very interesting uh, idea of masculinity, which is trying to hystericize itself. And, you know, interesting equation between trauma and privilege, which is something which we see 
and that story by Mansfield. Uh, moving on, we have two very interesting critical theory books uh, by Catherine Malibu. Now, Malibu is a very interesting figure in trauma studies in my mind because she offers this brilliant convergence of critical theory, deconstruction, post-structuralism, and trauma. And she offers a very post-structuralist model of trauma which is a very fertile field to look at in terms of understanding the relationship between trauma, language, embodiment, and narrativity, and how these become slippery categories, which sort of mix and merge and deassemble with each other uh, in terms of offering a very interesting idea of the mind, the traumatic mind, uh, which is something which we don't quite, which can't quite map medically. So how critical theory uh, sort of converges with fiction to provide a very fluid framework, uh, as uh, Malibu demonstrates spectacularly, uh, to offer a fuller understanding of the traumatic mind, the politics of trauma, and the trauma of politics. Again, that convergence between the inside and the outside, between the embedded and the extended, uh, the interplay becomes very interesting. And the post-structuralist critical theory framework of Malibu offers a wonderful uh, philosophical uh, field to look at. Uh, moving on, we have Cash 22 by Joseph Heller, almost funny novel of trauma, right? So the funniness of Cash 22 is exactly what makes it so political because it's a novel about uh, cognitive exhaustion. So there's no uh, cognitive possibilities left. So the narrative becomes almost funny in a dark, humorous way, which is also reflective of the cognitive dissonance that trauma produces. So funniness is not really happiness over here. So the laughter uh, in Heller's novel is laughter of exhaustion, uh, perverse laughter, which is profoundly traumatizing quality. So it's almost a traumatophilic quality, a numbed condition which gets extended into a traumatophilic condition, which is something which you see uh, in Cash 22. Following that, we have Slaughterhouse Fire by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, again, a wonderful uh, example in fiction of the relationship of temporality and trauma. So how the narrativity and embodiment become connected categories, especially in the traumatic condition, something which Vonnegut does wonderfully well. Uh, we have two uh, philosophical books right after that, Trauma Fiction by Anne Whitehead, An Unclaimed Experience by Cathy Carew, both very famous uh, works, uh, looking at the relationship between trauma, identity, and politics. So what we are trying to do, as we can, you can hopefully understand by now, is to look at trauma as a, in a, a representational category, trauma as a political category, trauma as an epistemic category, but more important, trauma as a liminal category, right? So the liminality of trauma, something which keeps moving across different spectra, right? And how literature offers this very fluid medium through which that liminality may be captured and curated and, of course, represented. We come back to fiction at the end. We have two novels, one by Toni Morrison, Beloved, and uh, the other by Tsitsi Dangarenga, Nervous Conditions, looking at the relationship with race, identity, and trauma. So again, spectrality becomes important, identity becomes important, and the production and preservation of identity and how agents is related to that. Uh, discrimination, oppression, uh, repression, how these become profoundly political categories as well as traumatic categories. So as you can see, this is a very naturally and organically interdisciplinary course. It draws on memory studies, which is something that I'm deeply interested in, but also in anthropology, fiction, literature, critical theory, philosophy, anthropology, as I mentioned, urban geography, so all kinds of uh, disciplines sort of converge in a text and a course like this uh, to make it really interesting and exciting. So hopefully you'll have a lot of takeaways from a course like this. Uh, it'll be very interactive. As I mentioned, there's an online forum which will be formed and we can, we can put questions, comments, and I'll do the best I can in terms of responding to the same. So welcome again to Trauma and Literature and I look forward to interacting with you in the times to come. Thank you for your attention.